So I have JMRI opened here, and in order to program the DS64, uh, first you have to set the ID for each uh, DS64 decoder. In order to set the ID for the DS64, first you hold down the stat button for about 10 seconds until it stops blinking quickly and blinks slowly between green and red. Make sure to release the stat button as soon as the pattern changes or it will reset. Using your throttle, enter in a switch address and then send a throw command. Now the DS64's ID will be programmed to the switch address that you entered in. Once you have set the ID for each DS64, you can then program using JMRI. So first thing I need to do is you go up to the local net, you'll see I only have a few options here. And that's because I currently have JMRI set to use the PR4 as a standalone programmer to code. So to change this, uh, I'm going to go to Edit, Preferences. All right, so we got Digit Tracks, local net, PR4. But command station type, I'm actually going to connect it to the Zephyr, which is basically what I have. And save. It's going to want to restart. Okay. And it comes back up here. So back to full mode. All right, now if I go to local net, you'll see I have all these options. So I want to go to configure DS64. Okay. So here we have to type in the address. So I gave each unit uh, a different address. Uh, the one on the right is address 10, and the one on the le I'm sorry, the one on the left is address 10, and the one on the right is address 20. So let's do add 10 first. Okay. So we want to go over here to output addresses. All right, so right here, these are the output addresses. These are each switch machine. So in the past, what I have done when I had my old layout is each address corresponded to the decoder it was connected to. So for example, decoder 1 was labeled decoder 10, and it had six outputs. So output 1 was 11, output 2 was 12, output 3 was 13, and so on. However, when I originally labeled my switches on the little, cut the little turnout controllers, uh, I actually came up with a different numbering pattern, and it has to do with the location of the switch on the layout. So all the switches that are in the tens are connected to the main line. All the switches in the twenties are connected to the siding, the or the branch uh, spur that goes off to the station and all the ones that are in the 30 range are connected to the roundhouse spur and control the sidings for the freight yard or freight sidings, not really a yard. So I'm going to use those same numbers here. So address 1 is actually going to be 11 and then address 2 will be 12 address 3 should be 13 and then address 4 will actually be 21 because that is the first switch in the station spur. Okay, so now we have all these. So I'm going to tell it to write full sheet. Alright, supposedly this is set. So let's check that. So we can then move this window over. We can go back over to here, go to actions, turnout control. So let's connect to turnout 11 and let's try throwing it. And we are not getting, oh there it goes. Okay, so that is now working. Close the straight, throw it as here. Okay, so that did work. Uh, let's try 
twelve. Enter. So throw. Okay, I guess I just didn't hit enter, so we're good there. Okay, that works. Let's try thirteen. Enter. Thirteen seems to be good, and then let's try twenty one. Yep, that seems to be working as well. Okay, that's good. All right, now we got to program the other decoder. So let's bring up our decoder window again here. And this time we want decoder 20. So enter. And then our addresses are going to be 22, 23, so these are both connected to the station spur, and then 31, and 32, which are connected to the roundhouse spur. So write full sheet. Okay. It should be good. So now let's go back over here to our throttle control. So let's do 22, enter, and let's see if, what happens if I throw it. There we go, it's working. We've got it working, cool. All right, let's do 23, enter. And that is working, okay. Let's do 31. That's good. And then last, 32. All right, that seems to be all set. So these are now all programmed, and we should be good to go. So it's that simple. Uh, JMRI makes this so much easier than going in there and having to hold down one of the status buttons and then throwing switch just makes it so much easier. That's why I highly recommend uh, if you have the ability to connect JMRI to your layout, do it because it just makes programming and running things so much easier. Now let's take a look at how to program routes using JMRI. Uh, a route basically lets you set several turnouts to go all off at once or in sequence so that your locomotive or train will go to a specific location on your layout. So for example, let's say I want a train to pull into the track station number two. I can set up a route that will throw the switch that uh, has the train go on to the station spur, and then also has it go specifically into the track two uh, siding. So that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, like I said, JMRI makes this so much easier than trying to do it manually uh, with the decoder directly using the input buttons. So here it's pretty easy. All I have to do is first the, set the top turnout. So this is the address you're going to give the route. I'm going to give it our address of 42. Um, I already gave 41 to the route to go into the first siding of the train station. Uh, I'm using 4 and 2, obviously track 2, 4. I'm having 40 be all of my routes. 
Uh, like I said, the numbering system I'm using has to do with the location of the switch or what it's doing, so anything in the 40 range will be a route on my layout. You can do it however you want. All right, so this is going to throw switch 12, and when 42 is thrown, I want 12 to be thrown, and then I also want switch 22 to be thrown, which will have the train go into track 2. All right, so let's write the full sheet. All right, and then we'll go over here. We'll test it. Okay, only one switch went because I already had Route 41 thrown, so it was already set. Uh, switch 12 had already been thrown. Now, one thing I learned is if you want... You would think, okay, I've set this up. Now if I want to close everything, I should just do the opposite. But when I click, nothing happens. Well, what I've discovered is to have a closed route, you actually have to set another route and have everything close. It's kind of annoying, uh, but that's just the way it is. So we'll go to Route 4. So 42. This time I want it closed. Switch. Turn out 12. Closed and turn out 22 closed okay so let's tell it to write the full sheet and yeah, it's got to go through all the other ones okay now that that's done now I should be able to throw and close this entire route so let's okay it's already thrown yep you can hear them snap throw it again all right, so that does seem to be working. I'm going to set up a route. You'll see I have I have eight turnouts on my layout, and this route can have up to eight turnouts put into it. So I'm actually going to set a route. Uh, I'm going to label it Route 55, and this is going to be, I'm going to leave it closed. This is going to be my route to reset everything. So this will reset everything to factory, or not factory. I can basically set this route to make sure all my switches are normalized. Now what I did notice is it starts out with turnout 2. So the top turnout can be an actual turnout number. Um, so what I'm going to end up having to do is I'll have to make a, a third route, or route 6. I will just make one turnout so that both route 6 and route 5 are thrown at the same time. So, uh, we're just going to go through the list here and make sure everything's normalized. So, 11, closed. 12, closed. 13, closed. 21, closed. 22, closed. 23, Closed. 31. Closed. All right, so let's write the full sheet. All right, and then I'm actually going to go into Route 6. This will make this one. 55. Closed. And 32. Oops. Closed. All right, so it's a little bit deceiving, turnout 8, that's technically turnout 7. But anyway, so we have all this set. So now, when I go over here, if I throw in 55, and I say closed, everything should go to the closed position. So let's say I, I'll say I set... Yeah, I say 11, so that one, then route 42, I throw that, and then let's say I wrote, wrote route 40, 
six. All right, so I got all these switches thrown, or turnouts thrown, and now I want to normalize everything, so I'll type in 55. So to close, and everything should go back to the closed status. Yep, that cleared everything out. Cool. All right, so we are done. So now I can say I am complete here, and I've gone over all the different programming that we can do through JMRI for setting out your routes and switches. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like this video or are interested in Japanese trains or trains in general, I invite you to please subscribe to this channel. You can also check out my website at gilshret.info. Additionally, I'm on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash gilshret and Twitter at twitter.com forward slash gilshret channel. And once again, thanks for watching.